So it's not really more like micro needle, but micro surgical. Uh, so good morning, everybody. My name is Stefano Carpin. I'm from UC Merced, where I lead the robotics lab. And I was given five minutes to search for the collaboration opportunities in a topic uh, that initially I said, gee, I don't know this because it's not what I do. Then I thought a little bit more and I said, that, well, there is a possibility to find probably some collaboration. So I guess not many of you are familiar with robotics, as you see said. Maybe uh, this is the first time you hear about it. So there's one core faculty, myself. I established a lab last year. I have three PhD students. There are two other faculty members that do some work in robotic, uh, Song Guayo and um, Marcelo Kalman. And these are some of the topics we go after uh, right now. So our deep expertise is in planning and control for single and multiple robot systems. Uh, urban search and rescue, which is another of the citrus topics, but not related to what I'm supposed to talk about today. We have a project on mobile sensor networks for independent and safe living at home. And there will be a poster session later on if you want to know about it. Crossing fingers, we just knew that we were going to have significant funding to start a center of excellence on humanoid and anthropomorphic robotics. And I think that where the real uh, possibility to collaboration is, is in leveraging a very advanced simulation system for robots at all levels that we have been developing with other universities in the last uh, few years. So when we talk about micro-robotics, uh, usually people mean two different things. Uh, maybe they mean micro robots. So micro robots are devices in the scale between 10 minus 3 to 10 minus 6 meters. And the issues there are design and fabrication and control. How do we move these things? And this is where um, the expertise we have at Merced can help. And the other thing, which is what is more uh, related to healthcare, is in micro manipulation, which goes into uh, micro surgical. And so handling objects of that size, 10 minus 3, 10 minus 6. Um, historically, you know, robots started as manipulating things. Uh, when you go down to that size, many th interesting things happen, but this is where it's very relevant for healthcare applications, eye surgery, plastic surgery, and so on. Um, what are the challenges for the roboticist in this area? Well, the thing is that when you go very much into small, uh, the relative importance of forces change dramatically, so things that you usually completely ignore, become relevant, and vice versa. And so from the control point of view, if you have to control a micro manipulator, if you have to control a micro robot that moves in a fluid, for example, people talk about delivering drugs by having these micro robots, for example. Um, the problems turn out to be incredibly difficult uh, to deal with. They are almost all deep in linear, hard to model, and so on. And at such a small scale, uh, things that robotics people usually take for granted, like sensing and actuation, assume a completely different meaning. What does it mean having a sensor on a robot that is 10 minus 3 meters? What does it mean to actuate such a robot? Uh, for the end user, it's also pretty different. Uh, you are controlling a thing you don't really see. You have some uh, strange interface to deal with. So it's really a challenge both for the designer and for the end user. So what can we uh, go after? Uh, what can we offer at user set? First thing is that um, we have extensive expertise in control of robots, uh, moving in the most bizarre environments, adversarial environments, uh, talking about robots moving in fluids, and so on. And specifically, if we talk about um, micro manipulation, most micro manipulation are limited to one or two devices. Uh, we have uh, extensive experience in uh, dealing with many robots at the same time. Um, so this is where I think we can um, talk with people. And then when I thought a little bit more is that, um, yeah, I knew that having a Mac in between would not be a good thing. Um, if we talk about um, using the micro manipulator, one of the big issues is in training the person to use it. Okay, what does it mean uh, to use such a system? And of course, I mean, training, if you are training with a real system, is very expensive, and you want to well-train people. Now, what we have done in the last three, four years is uh, we have developed a simulation environment, uh, which among the other um, purposes has the purpose of training people to use uh, robotic systems. And by um, being a 
based on a commercial game engine and many other uh, things, uh, we really have developed a level of expertise where typically we give the similar to people, they learn how to uh, drive the real robot. And then we have this approach, which is called swap and play, where you actually you don't tell them, but you change the back end. Rather than going to the simulation, you go to the real system, and it behaves exactly the same way. So this is a great tool that we have verified in practice to train people to drive real robots. And I see absolutely no reason why this cannot be a great tool to train people to work with uh, micro manipulators. Uh, the other thing is it allows to do very easily virtual design. What happens if I move uh, the microscope to a different position? What happens if I have two microscopes rather than one? What happens if I move a sensor to a position rather than the other one? These are all things that we have done for mobile robotics with great success. And people have turned out to change the design of their robots by using this um, simulation environment. Now, as I said in the beginning, and this is my last slide because I exhausted my five minutes, um, we don't have uh, this system in place for um, micro manipulation, but we can develop it. And to give an idea about the flavor and I will let about this system, I will let the little movie run while I conclude and I take time for questions. And yet again, it looks like it's not really opposite. Can you see it down there? I'm sorry. Um, well, you're welcome to see it later on on the laptop if you wish. I mean, this is. Yeah, it's the last one. No, nope. last one? Yeah. So, this is for the design we have for an urban search and rescue scenario. Of course, this is different, but it gives an idea about the kind of feedback we can provide to the end user. Uh, and, uh, and the kind of uh, rendering that it offers. And with this, I think I'm done. Sorry? <laughs> so, well, okay. <laughs> All right, so you are encouraged to. Uh, this is an um, urban search and rescue scenario that we set up, but the uh, um, the system is designed to simulate any kind of robot, so you can go down to whatever kind of accuracy and, and level. So this is where we train our first responders to answer to possible um, disaster scenarios. But I mean, we can, of course, place an eye wherever we want at whatever uh, scale we want. So actually, okay, I'm done. Uh, so manipulation is one of the areas where we are entering. Uh, we are going to acquire, uh, crossing fingers, two uh, very expensive uh, manipulators. And so we are building, actually, uh, uh, this kind of uh, expertise at Merced. Uh, we are particularly interested to extend the uh, use of the simulation not only to train um, operators that end up using flying robots or wheeled robots, but we that can use also, you know, uh, micro manipulators. Why not? Actually, I think that there is a great need to give these people uh, the opportunity to be trained while not playing with the real system, right? Uh, at the same time, the training should be in a system that is very faithful. And the things we have done extensively, one of the collaborators is a human factor person. So actually, he is able to measure effectively uh, what is the impact of training a person with the simulator and then back with the real system measure the differences, what can you take as granted that is going to work the same way, where is it that's not going to be extrapolated the same way, this kind of thing. Um, so some of the areas in clinical medicine yeah. where robotics are really uh, starting to play is uh, minimal invasive and micro invasive surgeries uh, where dexterity in highly limited environments is a problem. Yeah. Um, and sort of the, the the sad part of the market is that this is uh, the intellectual property, and this is largely owned by one company. Uh, yeah, I know it. And um, the but certain areas are sort of ripe for this kind of technology. For example, posterior access to the heart, um, you know, microinvasive appendectomies, those sort of things, um, single wound entry. 
what kind of approaches can robotics have to those kinds of things? Um, and as a as a point of reference, in the area of MEMS, there's been some there have been some uh, two Swiss groups. I think one Dutch and one Swiss groups that have yeah. created effectively small hands that can be re remotely operated. They're not robots, yeah. but they are remote operation. They're wireless and untethered. Uh, so that it essentially allows you to operate very small areas as if you had your hands in that, yeah. in that site. So I wonder if, if some of those might actually apply. Uh, yeah, so when we go to the very small, the concept of robot or actuation changes a lot. It's untethered, it's minimal, it's, it should be minimal invasive no matter what is the application because it's so, so small. Um, I'm aware of this, uh, I think it's ATH, yeah. Um, they had a pretty big coverage recently. Um, the kind of things we can do there, I mean, we don't do any hardware, but the, I think we're relatively scaling in terms of controlling these this things. And so the modeling and the control part is something where we can actually provide our expertise. And then one other aspect of this is um, a, lot of, a lot of body parts are, are moving, um, even though you don't think they are, but they are, uh, even just from blood flowing through them. Yeah. So there's, a, there's an issue of, um, of uh, tracking motion, which yeah. is, is and largely on some. We have worked a lot. So when it, when it comes to move things from point A to point B, and things could be big robot or a micro needle or whatever, this is where we have developed quite a lot of expertise. So this is really uh, one of the open problems, by the way, but it's quite challenging and exciting. Yeah. Other questions?